I have a confession to make to you this morning. Sometimes when I am preparing for a homily, I need outside help. And so this week was no exception, and I went to one of my best resources. Believe it or not, it is the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. They know a lot about kings and kingdoms. I ask them to think about the word kingdom and to give me a word that came to mind to them. And so I got what, what I kind of expected, monarchy and sovereignty and royalty. And then somebody gave me the answer I really was hoping for. Magic. <laughs> and I was going to talk about the connections with Disney World, but we won't go there. <laughs> then I asked them for, the, for a word that reminded them of king. And when you discount all the references to LeBron James, I came up with what was a pretty much the expected list. Ruler, gold, wealth, jewels, queen, crown, throne, power. And they were great answers, but there were two that stuck out to me. And I know they stuck out to me because when the kids said them, my reaction was, huh, hadn't thought of that. The first one somebody said was, deck of cards. Didn't expect that one. And the other one was Kong as in King Kong. Didn't expect that one either. My reaction was, huh, was the unexpected. It was truly out of the box answers. And I think that's relevant to the gospel today and to the feast that we celebrate. The feast of Christ the King is about the unexpected. Go back 2,000 years ago, and the, the thoughts that people had as to what a king was are exactly what they are today to the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Ruler, crown, jewels, queen. Those thoughts were there 2,000 years ago. But how did they relate to Jesus? Actually, they did. Jesus did wear a crown. His was of thorns. He did have a throne. It was the cross. And he did have power, not over people, but over darkness, over death, over evil. And the gospel today really portrays that. Although it talks about the events of Good Friday and the crucifixion of Jesus and the crucifixion of the two, the, the two thieves that were on each side of him, it really highlights what Christ as King is all about. We first hear from the bad thief, who's only interested in himself. Save us. No remorse, no asking for forgiveness, no accountability for what he had done that was wrong. Just save me. And he is rebuked, not by Christ, but by the good thief, who also led a life that was not what we would expect. He was a criminal, but he recognized the errors of his way. He knew he deserved what he was getting. But he recognized who Jesus was. In that beautiful dialogue between the good thief and Jesus, we hear the good thief say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He knew Christ was king. And Jesus' response to him equally is beautiful. Today you will be with me in paradise. Demonstrates Christ's great power over evil, over death. And so fast forward back to today. I was going to ask the question of how do we approach Christ as king? But the kids got me thinking about looking at things out of the box. And so the question really to consider today is, who is king 
in our lives today? Do we focus on materialism, on greed, on power, on being self-centered, just like the bad thief? Or are we focused on selflessness as opposed to selfishness, on being of service to one another, on being focused on others rather than on, on ourselves? Where is our focus? If our focus is on Christ as it was for the good thief, that's where we want it to be. That's where it needs to be. The good thief demonstrates for us also how we need to be active in seeking out Christ. God is always present. Jesus is always there. We need to keep that in mind and be constantly looking for those ways and those messages from God to draw us closer to him. That's what the good thief, even in his moment of desperation, in the last moments of his life, turned to God. And that's what we're called to do as well. Because when we do, and when our focus is on God, then we too will hear Jesus say to us someday that you will be with me in paradise.